Hey guys, what's going on? This is Sincere with A9 Radio Live and the All Rights Matter show. Listen guys, there's been a lot going on in Oregon. Um, I mean, it's I mean the situation is just volatile right now. We have uh, a few guys that are still left at the refuge. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the Patriots that was out there was actually... Uh, uh, killed by law enforcement. We're not sure whether that was FBI or state police as of uh, yet. Maybe we can get a little clarification uh, on that from uh, Brandon. And that was uh, LaVoy Finnecum. So we're going to be talking about that. And we're going to be talking about a lot more uh, details that are happening on the ground right now, live in Oregon. So Brandon, are you there? I'm here. How you doing? All right, Brandon, what's going on? How, first of all, how are you? Are you okay? I'm okay. Um, our crew's okay. We're tired. Obviously, it was a long, long afternoon, a long uh, night, but uh, we're good. Good, good, good. Well, first of all, it's good to hear that you're safe. I mean, I'm sure, uh, well, actually, I absolutely know that you've been follow following a lot of what's been going on, and you guys have been involved in a lot of what's going on, too. And, uh, you know, it's been a little bit hard reaching you, but the times that I have been able to, I, I see that you've been up on uh, everything. So, uh, you know, just uh, if you could just tell our listeners what is, you know, what's going on, you know, just give us a brief rundown of this last 24 hours. And I, I mean, uh, you know, what can you tell us? Well, in the last 24 hours, um, it was brought to our attention um, that, Ammon and uh, several others from the refuge were heading up from Burns, Oregon to John Day, Oregon, uh, into a different county. And on their way up to that meeting, which was going to be a meeting with the with ranchers up there who were also going to nullify their BLM leases, um, the FBI, Oregon State Police, and the Sheriff's Department uh, engaged in a traffic stop to stop the two vehicles uh, with the people from the refuge in those vehicles and, and attempted to make a traffic stop with them. Um, okay. Ultimately, um, the first vehicle stopped. Uh, they were take they took those subjects uh, into custody without incident. Uh, the second vehicle um, put his hands out of the uh, door and said that uh, you know he was he was unarmed. He you know wasn't going to cause any harm, but he was going to go see the sheriff. He needed to talk to the sheriff. So he pulled ahead about another three quarters of a mile to where he uh, found a roadblock. Um, they had a roadblock in place. This vehicle had five passengers in it, uh, three, three males and two females. Um, and when they came up to the roadblock, uh, the driver lost control or slipped on the ice and went into the snowbank right there. Um, at which time he got out of the vehicle. Uh, this would be Lavoie Finnicum, who was driving this vehicle. Okay. He got out of the right. vehicle um, with his hands in the air. Okay. And okay. he said he was, uh, he's had his hands in the air saying, don't shoot, I believe. But then he followed up with that as, if you're going to shoot me, just shoot me now. And he was, I believe they were giving him commands uh, to walk towards the back of the vehicle, which he was doing. And he was, had his hands in the air, uh, no visible weapons saying, if you're going to shoot me, just shoot me. Um, and so they shot him three times and re uh, ultimately fatally shot him and killed him. Oh, man. Oh, man. I tell you what, it's, uh, you know, just listening to you say it, you know, it, it's surreal of actually, you know, so many stories that we hear, you know, going across the United States right now and dealing with law enforcement and and uh, just this uh, this mentality of, your life is in my hands and I can just take it if I want to. And it's okay if I take your life because nothing's going to happen to me because you're technically the bad guy. Even though these guys are the freedom fighters that are fight, uh, fighting against tyranny from a tyrannical government that is uh, clearly and legally in the wrong. And, um, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. I mean, you know, this tyrannical government can have... Uh, they they have thugs. That's what they have. They have a, a bunch of thugs that are running around and uh, enforcing laws that are not really laws. They're not because they're not legal. So, you know, I'm sure when uh, Lavoie put his hands up and, you know, 
and you know we've seen the video anybody that's been watching what's going on we've seen the video of uh the reporter that was talking to him before and we knew that what his mentality was he he was there for a serious reason he understood uh freedom he understood being a patriot and he also understood that he could die and uh yeah you know lavoy was uh i knew lavoy um very good guy um family man wife kids grandkids just always happy you know and uh i'm gonna get a little emotional here but um a good guy and he didn't deserve to be gunned down in cold blood no absolutely not absolutely not nobody deserves that and you know it uh I, I I'd hate to say it, especially in a moment like this, but uh, you know, we wouldn't be a non radio if we didn't speak the truth. Um, you know, the way that the media wants to paint this picture and the way that they want to paint him, you know, it, it it's mighty funny that he would be the first one to die. You know, it it, it to me I, I find that rather interesting and it you know i i don't want to imply that it was a plot but you know a lot of things that we see are false flags they're plots um and we never know what goes on behind the, that uh curtain that uh that blue line curtain you know and, unless you're actively living in that lifestyle you don't know what the conversation is before the incident so i don't know you know if they had it planned and if they had it already out for them but i do know one thing uh you know they don't have a good attitude towards anyone that's there and and i believe that uh you know uh, i i pray that no one else dies but i believe that uh they do mean more harm to more people that are there yeah uh, i i agree um you know i just don't understand uh you know where they where they conducted this traffic stop. You know they followed them up into the into the area there. It's in a canyon between the two counties and the two towns, where there's no comms, no communications whatsoever, no cell phone. Um, you know they basically put them into a fatal funnel, if you will. And um, you know the, the facts I'm sharing with you are from an eyewitness that was sitting in the vehicle next to Lavoy, um, who who we spoke with and sat down with. Um, so I believe them to be very accurate, and knowing Lavoy. Uh, he just that's not his uh, his demeanor isn't to be aggressive. I know there's another guy that put a video out there saying that you know he was in the other vehicle, but he was also a mile down the road because there was a separation between the two vehicles. And he said that Lavoy tried to charge the officers. Um, I don't believe that. The eyewitness account that I have re refutes that. Um, you know, to 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 take them into that position there into that what we call a kill box in a roadblock like that. Um, she said there was even uh, FBI agents or law enforcement up on the hillsides above the road, like in sniper positions. So that tells me that they had intended to ambush them and had intended to take somebody's life. And it's really unfortunate. Yes, it, it, it's absolutely <laughs> unfortunate. And, and, you know, this is something that um, I talked about recently. Um, I haven't talked about it too openly, but I'll say it now. Um you know, this is to them, you know, they're using a lot of their tools and, and uh, toys and stuff that, uh, you know, that law enforcement and the FBI play with. And, uh, you know, they have LIDAR scanners and all kinds of stuff uh, that's out there that 99 percent of the public doesn't even know what it is. And, and when you take into account all these toys that they have and all this manpower that they're putting in all these, you know, positions for just a few people in, in some vehicles, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It, it, it just goes to show what our government is really about when they could have sent a couple suits. They could have sent a couple suits, met at the community center there in town, and sat down and had a conversation. But that was obviously, uh, you know, too easy to do. Instead, send, a, you know, troops of the FBI and a whole bunch of firepower. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's really easy you know, that, that didn't need to end that way. You know, they had far more um, law enforcement in place there than there was people in that vehicle. Um, you know, with my background in law enforcement, as, as we know, it was uh, absolutely call for. Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and listen, you know, uh, not to make the situation uncomfortable or anything like that, but 
I have a, uh, you know, some, I have some listeners that have uh, a couple legitimate questions and, um, uh, you know, well, actually one, one legitimate question, we could sum it up in one. Um, as, as all of this was going down and I know you're, you're going through a lot, you know, uh, with Lavoy, uh, you know, being gunned down the way he was by law enforcement, but, uh, with, with that happening, um, folks have wondered, you know, what, what is the situation like as far as the perimeter security? Um, why weren't they protected? Why weren't there more people there? Um, where were the Oath Keepers? Where were the Three Percenters? Where were, you know, uh, these groups at that are supposed to be there protecting, you know, the refuge? Um, I, you know, like I said, I don't want to lay it on you too thick, but I, that I'm getting a lot of those questions. And I, I, wanna, I want you to kind of address that as far as what the position of your men were, you know, and, and you going into this. No, that's a good question. It's, it's a hard one to answer and swallow right now, but it needs to be addressed because I've been getting a lot of hate mail and a lot of threatening messages saying that, you know, the three percenters should have been there because we said that we'd be that security buffer. We said no more free Wacos. And I own every bit of that. You know, we, we have as much manpower on the ground there as we, we can. Um, there was also a drop in communication, and I don't certainly don't want to lay it on, uh, uh, you know, lay fault anywhere, point fingers. That's not what this is about. But there was a there was a uh, uh, you know breakdown in communication as far as them being mobile and on the road. We didn't even know they were heading there. Um, so we normally were we would normally be advised ahead of time so we can get our security and convoy in place. Um, it didn't happen this time, and um, we didn't even know they were on the road uh, or which route they were taking. So I, I think they were running late and um, behind schedules from you know what it seemed like to me, and they just took off. So. Uh, yeah, we, we weren't able to catch up to them, um, you know, and, and we own that. It's uh, not an easy thing to, to swallow, but, um, you know, it's reality too. We can't be everywhere all the time and we can't read people's minds as much as we'd like to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm, I'm listening and, uh, you know, uh, I can kind of tell that it's a hard situation. I, I'll just say that it, it, that's a a hard thing to really think about, you know, um, especially when, uh, pro, you know, when protocol is normally followed, uh, you guys probably, you know, it, it's probably like uh, you probably don't go pick them up or something, but you probably converge together. So when you go between that path, I'm guessing between the refuge and actually the town, which is probably a 20 something mile distance, that there's protection and cover. Yeah, you know, and they were headed up to the other side of town there, um, you know, to the other, they were headed to the north where the refuge to the south, so this was something outside our normal patrol area in regards to, you know, traveling and convoys and security. Okay. So it was just a breakdown in communication, you know. Um, I know those guys are just as busy as we are, and if you get behind schedule, you just you just go, you know, and, and I know that they went, they had, uh, what, eight, nine people? Yeah. Ten people with them total. Okay. Um, actually, eleven people total, I guess. Um, oh wow! You know, you, you would think that would be enough. Yeah, yeah. Maybe well, they didn't feel like they really needed the, the escort. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, you know, it's now, uh, how, how many ways uh, into the refuge are there? Is there like you know one road in, one road out, or is there a couple different ways? There's five. There's five different ways in and out of that that area and the refuge. Okay. Um, now, you know, this is a, another question, um, I guess, you know, that uh, is coming through, too, is, you know, if there's a few different ways in and out of there, and based on the manpower that they had ready to ambush these guys, I mean, we're talking, you know, two car carloads of folks that uh, they ambushed with snipers on the hill and also men on the ground with the blockade. Um, how do you think they knew their position? Outside of, you know, especially if it's being, you know, outside of their normal, ordinary uh, routine of things. Well, it's good. you know, they, they survey the people, you know, they, they follow, they watch, they, you know, they're flying drones over there and they have aircraft. So they're, you know, they're watching what everyone's doing. Um, and I'm also sure that, you know, that crew made it known they were going to go up there to that signing up there in uh, the neighboring county for the ranchers. So. You know, they knew the course of action. We knew they were going to head up there too. We just didn't know which which direction you know they were going or which time. 
yeah. you know what, what what time it would be um you know with um so they were they pretty much just tracking their schedule for the day right right or they're just watching them and then you know they knew they might have to go up through that way uh, there's another way up to Bur- actually there's you know up to, J- to john day there's probably three different routes and i'm aware of um maybe even four you know for all i know they could have had the same thing set up on every route not knowing what which way they were going to go there's there was hundreds of man there was hundreds of federal agents last weekend in that town um so they certainly had the manpower to carry out whatever they needed oh yeah uh, absolutely i mean especially if you have a 15 20 man post and you have that on you know two or three streets you you've covered everything and you still have additional manpower so you know um yeah, they absolutely had the numbers there, and, and we we uh, you actually came on the show and released the uh, the photos the last time, and you know we did put those out, and keep, it was well received. So we've seen all the vehicles that are there. We there is a very very sizable presence uh, in the area. Um, I want to kind of move forward and, and focus on right now. For the last. Uh, I'm going to say about 13, 14 hours maybe. Um, they have been live streaming from the refuge, um, a young man, I believe, by the name of David. And, uh, you know, there, there's, you know, they're locked in. There's, there's a lot of, you know, trolls online that are saying a lot of things. And, you know, and, and uh, they probably don't get the stance and the position of those folks that are in the refuge and, what predicament that they're currently in and how serious it really is. Um, do you have any insight as far as how those guys are doing that are currently still locked down? Is there any communication with them? Um, you know, it, 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 is there any kind of talk of what might come next, whether whether any of them are going to be extracted or whether they plan on staying there and seeing this thing out um, to, you know, the most unfortunate of ends? Um, I don't have contact with any of the people that are, that are currently up there. Um, everyone that I had contact with there has left the refuge, um, and have, has, has vacated. Um, you know, I, I don't know, even know how many individuals are left up there. There is a, there is a perimeter, uh, the roads are blocked, uh, by law enforcement on the way up there. Um, so it's, you know, our perimeter obviously has been pushed back, so we can't get close to see. Um, I have been following that live stream. Uh, when you know when it's up it's it's kind of in and out but um you know i i don't know um you know it seems to me from the live stream that i'm watching and the actions that they're taking with building the bunkers and and the um uh, you know the berms and whatnot that they unfortunately might be there till till the very end yeah i was uh thinking the same thing as well i, I saw that myself and uh you know i i I just pray for them. I pray for them. I pray for their families. Um, you know, I've I seen Lavoie's uh, daughter had posted up something uh, a little bit earlier about how they killed her father. And, and you know, it, it, it was a surreal moment there because you realize that it's just not these guys that are at a refuge, uh, you know, uh, drinking beer and hanging out with each other, having a good time. It's much more serious than that. And, and when a, a man of, uh, you know, Lavoie's caliber would be willing to just give up all of that, you know, in the name of saying, hey, look, we need to do something now because the federal government is, if if we don't do something now, the federal government is going to win this battle in the hearts, in the minds, and now physically in the lives of people, and there's no turning back. So when you have a man that stands up like that, I mean, I think we should really take a second to think about the folks that are really in there right now. Maybe they're not some of the guys that are left they're not all the the most sophisticated guys and you know uh or anything like that but they're still they still love this country they still love their rights they love their constitution and i believe that there's something that we could all learn from that yeah i mean you know you you can't fault the guy for his convictions and his beliefs and that's what they're doing um even though i may not agree with it i'll never i'll never uh, um you know sp- speak against somebody for doing that you know you I, I respect it you know it may not be the way i would do it but hey if, if that's if that's their belief and they're that convicted you know what can you say um you know lavoy uh lavoy love this country you know heart and soul you know i met lavoy uh, six months ago when we spoke and 
talked about us coming down there to help him with his ranch and the fight he had against the BLM. Um, got to know him during that time and spoke with him and saw him up at the, the refuge there. And uh, that, that man truly loved this country. And, and, and I, I could tell that he did, you know, just in the couple of pictures that I've seen with his daughter, they were, they were really, you know, it, it, it's those moments in life kind of pictures where you can see their special moments, you know what I mean? And um, it, a man is truly blessed when he can have special moments, you know, especially with his, uh, his daughter. And uh, you, you, you can't have any more blessings in life than that. You can't ask for any more than that. So... He was truly blessed. Um, I want to also talk to you about um, some of, you know, that there's been some people that have seen a few things around there. Um, has anybody come to you with like any eyewitness accounts of any anything that uh, they've seen maybe on the other side that you, your guys weren't on or, you know, something like that? Like uh, anything that, uh, you know, would be of significance? Yeah, I mean, we, we you know, I mentioned earlier that the, the my recollection and, you know, talking about what I know what happened up there and transpired was from an eyewitness that was in the vehicle with Lavoie. Um, you know, she, she uh, not only explained what we already co covered as far as how Lavoie was shot and fatally killed. Um, you know, the, after that happened, the, you know, the law enforcement agencies had, um, they, they shot the vehicle up. Um, I, I mean, she said she couldn't even count how many rounds went into that vehicle. Um, her guess was over a hundred. They, um, they shot the vehicle up. Yeah. Um, they, they threw uh, CS gas canisters into the vehicle with uh, passengers inside. Um, and then after they did that, they shot the vehicle up again. With, with the passenger still in there. Yeah. And ultimately, um, Ryan Bundy took a, took a, uh, took a round, uh, was shot in the shoulder why he was uh, hunched down on the floorboard of the vehicle. So he took that round while he was in the vehicle. Oh, wow. So he was shot in the shoulder and, mm -hmm. and they shot multiple shots into the vehicle. And that's the, the first vehicle. That was the vehicle that went around and was ended up stopped at the roadblock. Oh, okay. Okay. That's the one that uh, was the second vehicle, but it ended up being the first one. Correct. Okay. Okay. And that's, so that's the one that Lavoy was in. And, uh, it, now if Ryan was in there, do you know if Ammon was also in there? Ammon was in the other vehicle that was, that, that had stopped. Okay. Okay. And was he the driver of that vehicle? No, he was the passenger. Okay. Do we know who the driver of that vehicle was? Um, I'm not sure who the driver of that sec the, the first vehicle, which ended up being the second vehicle. I'm not real clear on who the driver was of that. Okay. Um, I think it was uh, a gentleman by the name of, of Mark, but I'm not sure. Okay. Um, the focus obviously has been on the vehicle that, you know, you know where Lavoie was driving because he, he was the one obviously shot. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, that you know, that's new information to me. I didn't know that they had uh, shot the vehicle up either. I mean, it, it just goes to show how overzealous uh, these folks are. They don't see a weapon being pointed at them. They don't care. It doesn't matter. They'll they'll say that someone used the vehicle or used a car, or, you know, or whatever. They they've done it all. They've said it all. So what, what's what's interesting too, um, Sherrod, is that. Um, Two, two things, you know, uh, five hours before that. Five hours before that, Ammon Bundy was on the phone with an FBI negotiator. And an FBI negotiator had agreed to set up a meeting with him in a public location so they could meet face to face. Five hours before this, that's what was discussed. And I guess they just decided to disregard that and start shooting people. Okay, yeah. I had put out a video by a... Um, a, a... A gentleman, I believe his name was Jason Patrick, um, if I'm not mistaken. And um, as the blockade was up, there was a reporter, a local reporter that's there in town um, that uh, that met Jason at the blockade as he was coming through the blockade. And uh, they actually uh, talked about that. He was on the phone with the FBI in the video, and that's what he was asking them, like, 
why did you cancel the meeting with Ammon? Because you knew that the media was going to be there. What you you know, pretty much, he was just questioning why they canceled it and and blaming the reason for canceling it also on the fact that there was going to be a media presence and you know it, we know that once the FBI gets rid of the media there there things are going to happen yeah rule, rules rules are out the window yep so I, I i mean you know you guys definitely had all reason to be uh nervous i guess you could say uh at, at that uh you know once that cancellation actually happened because that that's that's a clear sign that negotiations are quickly falling apart and the negotiations that they never really tried having in the first place. Right. Right. And it's also my understanding that during the, during the situation in the vehicle with the gunshots and, and the shooting, um, two of the passengers in that vehicle were in fact video recording the entire thing. Um, so it'd be interesting to see uh, from their phones, so it'd be interesting to see if uh, that 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 video gets released to the public by the FBI. You know why we're talking about transparency of the FBI. Ah, very excellent. So there's two possible recordings that are associated with this shooting. So it's not like uh, you know, it, even if the, the recordings aren't great recordings, we can still at least get the audio so we can hear what the situation is like. Yes, exactly. You know, the, I'm sure the video portion, that's not going to be very good if it's on the floorboard, but certainly the audio would be great. Well, Brandon, I, I tell you what, brother, I'm, I'm happy that you're safe. I'm happy that, uh, that you, you know, that, uh, given the circumstances that there is one, one death, one fatality, um, I'm happy that there's not more, uh, you know, but we, we still can't, we still can't neglect to remember, you know, that there's there's gentlemen that are still out there. There's patriots that are out there, Americans that are out there. Um, and, you know, I, I, I've i been looking at them for the last few hours, and I know that I'm looking at what is potentially uh, dead men walking. And, yeah, uh, I, I would agree with you. And still, I, I don't understand the reason behind that when it's so easy to just take one person – or two people to walk up there unarmed or even to send a, you know, armored vehicle up there and say, throw something out the window and say, Hey, we want to talk. We want to negotiate. We want to discuss things. But I see, uh, you know, through the live feed that they're flying the helicopters ab uh, above them. They're flying the drones above them. Um, I'm even seeing something else. That's a little weird. I'm actually, um, going to point this out to you now and maybe you want to take a look at this. Um, I was talking to my producer about it and she saw it too. Uh, there's uh, ever since the morning hours, these three chemtrails popped up in the sky and they're, they're perfect lines, perfect chemtrails, but they're dark in color and they're solid. And right. they, ha they have not moved, you know, in my recollection of watching the video the whole time from wherever he puts the camera at, they show up and they, you know, it's over the, just over the, uh, like this mountain line that's right behind them and right behind the, uh, the big caterpillar, uh, machinery that they have in the video. But, um, there's a black line that goes there and every time he moves the camera, it's not on his lens or anything. It's absolutely in the sky. And, um, you know, I, like I told my producer, I said, I, it's not like any chemtrail I've ever seen. And I believe that they're honestly out there playing with their new toys. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Very well could be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very well could be. And, uh, I, noticed, I noticed that at Life Feed, too. I saw that as well. Uh, where was that again? In the Life Feed you're talking about. I saw that as well. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it's, you know, it's odd what they have going on out there. And, you know, none of it is, like I said, none of it is working towards actually uh, having uh, any kind of resolution through, you know, actually speaking about, you know, uh, through negotiating. You know, but uh, Brandon, I don't want to keep you up. I know you have a lot to do. I know uh, there's a lot of movement going on right now. Um, I want to touch on one other thing um, uh, before we get off of here. Uh, there's been some uh, some videos that have come out. I'm not even sure whether you know about it, but uh, there was an attack that uh, also happened. You know, while the FBI was uh, busy 
canceling their meeting with Ammon, uh, simultaneously uh, a group actually popped up. I'm not even going to really mention their names because I don't want to give too much credence to them. But uh, an anonymous sect popped up and said that they were going to take you guys out and started uh, attacking the donation sites and the websites. Um, uh, can you speak on that a little bit? I mean, um, you know, has that affected you guys in any kind of way? No, it, it hasn't. I mean, I saw that, um, you know, it just goes to show for all the good things you do and all the supporters you have. You have twice as many that just want to uh, do something to harm you. And I firmly believe it's because they, uh, you know, they're not out here on the front lines doing what we do. And, you know, for whatever reason, they just need to, uh, you know, be haters, if you will. And it, uh, we're used to it and it won't slow us down and we'll just keep pushing forward. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a... Yeah, that's a good thing right there. I, you know, I, I just want to tell you uh, firsthand, I, you know, sp especially, you know, speaking from Anon Radio Live, we've supported you guys since day one, and uh, we've gotten a lot of information first uh, from you well before, you know, anyone else had it. And um, we we really appreciate that, and you guys have been transparent with us. So, uh, you know, that that's what we offer our listeners, and uh, is it's what the people – uh you know what the people respect i think you can say so when you get people out there that are just being haters as you would say yeah um you know you you just kind of have to ignore them you have to kind of keep moving on you have to kind of keep doing your thing and and just kind of let that be what it is so i believe those guys yeah they are haters but um i also believe that it may be a little bit deeper uh, like I said, I, you know, was kind of leaning towards it, it's just mighty odd that simultaneously at the same time, you know, as, as this FBI thing is going on with Ammon, that uh, this sect, this whole sect, this whole group of people that no one knows who they are uh, would pop up and declare a full war on websites. And, um, you know, I, to me, I felt like it was just a big distraction because where are those guys today, you know, and um and, and, you know, we, we've had a bunch of people attack us on our page and on my Facebook page and send us emails. And my response is always the same. I haven't seen you in Burns. Where are you at? Yeah. You know, yeah. If, if you think you can run it better, come on down. I'll hand the reins over gladly, you know. Um, you know, and typically at that point, they, they just leave you alone. But that's the reality of it. If you, if you want to sit back and armchair quarterback and you want to sit back and complain, get off, you know, get off your, your hiney and get out of your chair and come on out. Yeah, that that's absolutely right. I, I believe that the guys and girls behind that, though, I I believe they have a uh, quite cushy, comfy jobs with the government, so <laughs> they, yeah. they they probably don't want to come out of those places to come help protest. And that that's how I kind of see that situation. Uh, uh, whenever you see situations like that pop up, those simultaneous things are not just coincidences. It's a full scale attack and uh, included with the psyop. So and, well, uh, I think that's their role. Actually, they're they're hired and designed to do that. You know. Yes, absolutely. Just to cause the disturbance, so that the official narrative can get passed to the people, and uh, unfortunately, it's working. <laughs> you know, uh, to some extent, it's working now. Uh, with that being said, and you know, you know how I obviously feel about it, and um, how do you feel about what's going on right now? Like the direction of what's going on, like in closing, um, what do you see coming out of this? Do you see, uh, you know, uh, you know, kind of in the broad sense, do you see our nation moving forward uh, and saying, hey, you know, this was the right thing. Um, we get it. Um, we have to collectively stand up towards our government. Or do you see just um, maybe this light in the fire and a few people to continue the fight a little bit? Well, this is a very fine line. This is a hard question to answer, Sherrod. Um, the situation in Burns is going to change things in history forever. Um, you know, there's a lot of media, there's a lot of spotlight, there's a lot of attention on Burns, Oregon, and it's really unfortunate that the FBI did not see that, and all the law enforcement officers that are involved did not, you know, it just, they did what they typically do, you know, and we've been saying all along, that we know that there's going to be any aggression that's going to be done by the FBI. And here you have it. Case in point. It's just, it's a continual problem with them. I don't, you know, like I said, I have an eyewitness account that was sitting in that truck. 
and the first persons that that pulled that trigger were, were, were the government. And I firmly believe they had a reason for that. I firmly believe they wanted to um, uh, cause more damage than what they did do. Um, you know, I, I don't understand why they put, uh, launched CS canister canisters of gas into the vehicle. Um, you know, put over a hundred rounds in the vehicle. It just doesn't make any sense. You know, I mean, if you really a reasonable person can sit back and realize what what the bigger picture was there, and what this is going to do, it's going to light a fire in the Patriot Nation, and, and it'll never be the same. Um, it's certainly not going to slow us down. If anything, it's going to push us harder. That being said, um, there's been a lot of calls to action to go to Burns, Oregon, from uh, all kinds of militias and patriot groups and organizations. And I just want to urge and encourage those that are coming out to go there for the right reasons and do so with calm, cool, and collective heads. Um, we 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 can't lose ourselves in this to where we lose the entire the entire war that we're fighting. Um, you know, we are going to maintain you know, presence in town at the, at the request of the community. Um, they've reached out to us all night and all day, uh, asking us to be there. They're scared. They're concerned. We've built the trust with them. So we will continue to be there to help them, um, you know, and just give them some, uh, sense of security. The other thing we will do is we are going to continue, continue to be there to conduct our investigations with the, with judge Grasty and the, the previous sheriff and the corruption going on in the County. We are not going to let up on that. Absolutely. And I, I think that's what uh, is very important to do, because when we when we trace back the roots of everything that's going on, that's what it all boils down to is information. And, um, you know, that's what what the Hammonds were locked up for is, uh, you know, information. And they decided to use information in a negative way against uh, the Hammonds in an illegal way against the Hammonds by locking them up twice. Um, and I believe the same thing applies for a lot of those folks that are sitting in the, uh, the local state and uh, national government positions and law enforcement positions is they have just as much dirt as anybody else in life. And in um, and a lot, a lot of times, a lot more. And, um, you know, there's never any accountability. And I believe that this is what the whole situation is about. The federal government has overstepped their boundaries as far as taking land from the people. It's going on for a long time now. Videos have come out with uh, BLM folks laughing. I mean, literally laughing at the ranchers because they're losing their land. And, and, and yet, you know, you can't get any accountability through the appeals process. You can't get any accountability any other kind of way. So people ask me, they say, well, why do you sympathize, you know, um, you know, I, I get some of my black friends that ask me, they say, well, you know, you support Black Lives Matter and, and then you create it, you know, all rights matter. You know, what is this? What, what are you doing sympathizing with this? I don't get it. And, and I try to tell them that's why I created all rights matter is because I, I realized a long time ago, look, th this is about rights. That's all that this is about. And as long as we can all focus on the one thing that's important to us all which is rights, then it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what class you are. We're fighting, you know, if you will, the demons of classism. We're fighting a tyrannical government of elite people that have a lot of money and they want to control us. So yep, in, in that control, they take our money, they take our land, and they leave us with nothing. And we're left as being economic, uh, economic and eventually physical slaves. And the people don't see that. And, you know, how do you feel about that, Brandon? No, you're, you're exactly right. Uh, you hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, and like I've, I've said on this show many times, the Constitution knows no colors, and it applies to everybody. And, you know, um, someone tagged me at somewhere at some point, and I'm glad you brought up, you know, skin color. Um, there was a gentleman standing somewhere, um, not sure what was a different town, and uh, – you know, he's a black gentleman. He's holding a sign that says, hashtag, ranchers' lives matter. And doesn't that, I mean, if that doesn't make a statement, I don't know what is. What, yeah. what would? Absolutely, absolutely. And it does. And, it, and it, it, that's what it all boils down to. And, and that guy, he, he got it. He understood yeah. that, you know, uh, like you said, the Constitution doesn't have a color and that all rights matter. You know, yep. everybody has rights under that Constitution and, and we should all be afforded those rights. You know, there's always the, you know, the argument of, well, we're not all considered as, you know, equal under the Constitution. But 
in today's day and age we are now what we have to fix um and maybe you know this is too much for this conversation we'll save it for another time but what we have to fix and um if we would have got deep enough into the conversation is the enabling act for the states you know uh this goes back a long time and um there's a good pastor online i forget his name he he actually breaks all of this stuff down and uh he talks about the enabling acts and how uh, they don't fit with the Constitution. So the Constitution being the supreme document, those enabling acts for the states that, you know, uh, which enabled them to become states, they should be null and void because the federal government purposely wrote out a contract pretty much to the state saying, yes, this is your state, this is your land, but uh, we're still going to control territory within your state and your land. And there's only been a couple states that have actually picked up on that after all these years, you know, that they've been states, they picked up on it. And within the last few years, I believe uh, Utah and Texas have pretty much responded to the federal government saying, hey, wait a second, uh, you're going to have to clarify your terminology in this uh, enabling act because, you know, you have 30 days or 60 days to do it or else we're, we are claiming these lands as state, state uh, property and no longer federal lands. But these kind of issues and these kind of stories never hit the media and we didn't get a chance to really discuss this, um, you know, throughout this whole ordeal because people were getting too caught up in this or that. But when we get down to it, it gets down to the legal terminology. It gets down to the real basis of why all of this is going on. And, you know, the government and the media have been very good at shielding the fact that this case stinks and it's very ugly and they did not want to bring this case before a court because the federal government would absolutely lose and the bureau of land management would never get funded again right exactly so I, and there's a lot of jobs that rely on that i actually did some research into it and i see that um you know again um they have companies that do the lidar detection where they do uh, you know, they map out all the scenery and stuff like that. I mean, this is big business we're talking about. A whole bunch of alphabet agencies involved. So, you know, what you guys are doing out there is, is um, it's a big thing. And the federal government knows it. And, and they've been definitely working hard with the media to shield um, the real reasons that these people are up at the refuge. Yeah. And, you know, those guys up there... Again, they have strong convictions and they're going to, you know, they made it very clear if you watch their live stream, they're not going anywhere. Oh, yeah, they made it uh, absolutely 1000% clear. I can honestly say that. And uh, you have more balls than I'll ever have. I, I'll, I'll be, you know, the first American to, to tell you that I can't say ever have because I, I served in the military. So it, it wouldn't be too much for me to do that. But, um, you know, it, to do that and to get out of your comfort zone as far as what we all love, what we all enjoy. And for some of those gentlemen, they've been up there since day one. And I'm sure there's a couple of them that haven't even gone home yet. So, uh, you know, that's, that's a tremendous amount of dedication. And I mean, it's not, you know, like it's dedication towards a cult or anything like that. These guys are walking around with constitutions in their pocket. Right. <laughs> you know, and I guess, you know, if you, if you uh, stand for the Constitution, you pull a Constitution out of your pocket. Uh, that's a threat. You're, you're. I think the 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 law, the federal law enforcement technical term was a kook. Yeah, yeah. How about that? <laughs> and, and and of course they would use something like that and say something like that because they know that, <laughs> that Constitution means nothing to them. It, 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 I'm sure they have Constitution toilet paper. So. It, <laughs> Honestly, man, these these guys, that's how they stroll around. They stroll around like they're above the Constitution, they're above us, and they're untouchable because they know that they're protected by their uncle, and his name is Sam. So, yeah. you know, I well, listen, Brandon, I'm not going to take up too much uh, more of your time. I, I want to go ahead and let you go ahead and, and get in your plugs and let folks know where they can, you know, uh, follow you and stay updated with uh you know, any updates that you guys may have. No, and I appreciate the time on, on here. You know, it's, uh, I'm just thankful you guys are here to get the facts out and the true story. And, you know, the real information is what people need to hear, not what this, uh, you know, lamestream media, if you will. 
Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. If anybody out there, if you're listening to uh, lamestream media, as Brandon calls it, turn it off, guys. Turn it off. Mainstream media, MSM, is just as good for you as GMOs. So (laughs) turn it off. It's not good for your brain. It is, you know, it's just a bunch of extra flashy colors and a bunch of breaking uh, news that's not really factual news. And, you know, it's it's brainwashing the people. So, you know, Brandon, what's what's your website that folks can actually go to and, uh, you know, get some information about your organization, the Idaho Three Percenters? Sure. It's uh, www.iii percentidaho.org and we're trying to keep that updated as quickly as possible with information there's a tab there called operations and that's where this information's at uh, it's changing so quickly it's hard for us to keep up but um, more importantly we also have a spot there you know to help donate to the to to our resources everyone here is volunteer everything comes out of our pocket so we rely on donations for food, uh, food and fuel um, so you know please go there uh, support what we're doing and you know, five ten dollars doesn't matter any amount helps absolutely absolutely well um i you know I, I actually i have one more question for you um we've uh we've been working with um luke radowski from we are change uh and i'm not sure if you you're familiar with his channel no i haven't okay well he he's a you know pretty much a world famous guy he's he travels he's international he's always breaking the, the big stories everywhere and, and luke's a wonderful guy um he's actually going to be out there uh landing uh, as a matter of fact let me look here he's probably on the ground now so um it, it, or actually arriving very shortly um i want to put him in contact with you is it okay if we put luke in contact with you and uh maybe he he'll throw you in a video or something like that but um you oh know, absolutely yeah he's a good guy and he he's there for the truth as well and uh he's uh, been working with my producer, you know, for quite some time too. So we we'd like to include him and our family of things here at Anon Radio, and and uh, definitely put him in contact with you because, it, you know, we've just been so blessed by the fact that you've come on and, and shown so much transparency uh, to us and been open and vocal with us. So you know, Luke is a, definitely an extension of our family. Yeah, absolutely. Anything we can do to help, um, feel free to get him in touch with me, and uh, we'll get him plugged in. Okay, absolutely. All right, and one more time uh, before we head out, what, what's that website again? Oh, it's uh, www.iiipercentidaho.org, and just click that donation link at the top or operations for updates and information. You can also go to our Facebook page, our organizational Facebook page. We just type 3% of Idaho. We're putting updates there as well. Okay, well, we thank you, Brandon, for coming on with us. And for uh, all you guys and girls that are out there listening, um, I, again, I'm going to urge you, download the app, guys. That's how you're going to get push notifications whenever we go live and we have special shows like this that are on our regular schedule on Anon Radio Live. Make sure you get that app. Uh, it's just going to take you a few seconds to download it. It's not in the Google Play Market. It's a custom app that we have, and we can't put this kind of information in the Google Play Market. So, you know, you guys, make sure you get that. And, um, again, tune in to Anon Radio Live. Make sure you go to my Facebook fan page, the All Rights Matter Show. And, Brandon, we thank you, and we'll be talking to you again shortly. You make sure you stay alert and stay alive. All right, brother. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. All right now. All right.